Greetings everybody, Gleekon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. Where we left off last time, Gul'dan and Kil'jaeden had taken over, had infiltrated basically, and started um, an insidious corruption of the Shadowmoon clan, and specifically its leader Ner'zhul. And uh, the next thing they want to do is foment um, a conflict between the Draenei and the Orcs, because ultimately what Kil'jaeden and the Burning Legion want is the Orcs to exact vengeance on the Draenei, and, and which will also prepare them to be the, the Burning Legion's next recruits into its demonic forces when they go to attack Azeroth. So stay a while and listen to this one called The Seeds of Hatred. I think this is where we're going to get that. To incite conflict between the Orcs and the Draenei, Gul'dan turned to the Bladewind clan. Its largest village was at the edge of Terakar Forest, near the Draenei capital, Shatrath. For many decades, tensions had simmered between this com this community of Bladewinds and its neighbors. The orcs sometimes ransacked Draenei caravans and enslaved or killed anyone who could not escape. When the elemental spirits became erratic, the Bladewinds suffered greatly. Their water sources went dry, and the wild game they hunted died off. The Red Pox also decimated the clan. Nearly 70% of the Bladewinds succumbed to the disease. The Bladewinds were desperate, and that made them vulnerable. Gul'dan approached the Bladewind village as a representative of the Shadow Moon. After many long discussions with the orcs, he convinced them that the Draenei were responsible for the Red Pox and the world's elemental woes. Gul'dan assured the Bladewinds that if they were to spill Draenei blood, such an act would appease the elemental spirits. Like all orcs, the Bladewinds held the Shadow Moon shaman in high regard. They had no reason to question Gul'dan. They embraced his advice, eager to change their fortunes. Lightly armed Bladewing Raiding parties soon gathered and assaulted Draenei caravans in greater numbers than ever before. The orcs murdered dozens of innocents and took just as many prisoners. One of these captives was Laron, the sister of a vindicator named Murad. We've heard about Murad before. I believe he might even be um, like uh, one of the Exarchs. When Murad learned that his sister had gone missing, he urged the Draenei leadership to take action. Many other vindica Vindicators also called for something to be done. The Bladewinds had preyed on their traitors for too long. It was time to eliminate the threat once and for all. Velen appealed for calm. Something did not sit right with the Prophet. In the long years since the Ganadar's crash, he had slowly regained his ability to see the future, but his visions remained unreliable. Strange images bombarded his thoughts, many of them indecipherable. Yet there were a few that concerned him. Around the time of the Bladewind attacks, he saw visions of an immense shadow looming over the orcs, guiding their actions. Velen and the Exarchs sent the Rangari to report on the Bladewind's activities and discern whether some unseen power was at work behind their violent outburst. The Draenei scouts found no evidence that the orcs were being manipulated, but they did return with horrific stories. The Bladewinds were slaughtering their prisoners in gruesome rituals to appease the elements. Only a few captives had not yet suffered this grim fate, and Leron was among them. Murad could stand by no longer, not when there was still a chance to save his sister. He made an <coughs> impassioned plea to Velen. <laughs> he made an impassioned plea to Velen and the Exarts to launch an offensive against the orcs. Reluctantly, the Draenei leadership agreed. Led by Murad, a small force of Vindicators and Rangari stormed the Bladewind village. By the time they reached the settlement, Laron and the other captives were dead. The sight of his sister's mutilated body enraged Murad, and he rampaged through the village. From a distance, Gul'dan watched as violence engulfed the Bladewind settlement. The orcs were so desperate to appease the elements that they fought until nearly every single one was dead. <laughs> he wants to be on the episode. A few survivors fled east towards Shadowmoon Valley, but they never reached their destination. Gul'dan murdered the survivors so that they could never tell of what had truly happened in Terakar Forest. Only the Warlock's version of events would survive. After returning to the Shadowmoon clan, Gul'dan recounted the atrocity as he saw it. The Draenei had launched an unprovoked slaughter against the Bladewinds. They had murdered male and female, young and old. Word of the bloodshed spread throughout the clans. The seeds of hatred and suspicion toward the Draenei took root. So, um, what we have here is the, you know, to, to summarize what just happened, we have Gul'dan, acting as an ambassador of the Shadow Moon Shaman, came to the Bladewind tribe that was already struggling, weak, small, and told them, you got to kill the Draenei if you want things to get better. They said, okay, fine. So they went in. They, ki they started killing them indiscriminately, women and children. And they took prisoners and then were murdering and, and doing these rituals against 
they're prisoners. So finally that spurred the, the Drenai to attack the camp and get their prisoners back. And when they did come, they got to the village and it was too late. All the captives were murdered. So when he saw his mutilated sister's body, he just went amok. And every single orc fought until they were dead. Even though, you know, the women and children, even them, they were so desperate. So, and the, the Draenei complied, they killed them. But when Gul'dan goes back to the other orcs, he says, this is a Draenei slaughter. So he's, he's playing puppet master here. So... That was all it took for these seeds of hatred and suspicion. Hey, the Draenei came and wiped out an entire settlement, an entire clan, women, children, everyone. This is a picture of Murad discovering his sister in the Bladewind village. Luckily, she doesn't look very mutilated as far as we're concerned. She doesn't even look, she look like she could be sleeping. Um, but from the description, it's probably a lot more gruesome. Again, this is generally a, a PG game. All right. So this episode is done in the pipes 5x5. Five five. I will see you on the next episode of Lore of Warcraft. Thank you for listening to me and Sora. Bye-bye.